like Hansel and Gretel, Bart and Lisa, Luke and Leia, our first guests are bound by some very talented DNA. They are Grammy and Oscar-winning singer-songwriters. Their latest smash hit is called What Was I Made For? Please welcome Billie Eilish and Phineas. <laughs> Besides you guys being you guys, I don't think I've ever had a brother and sister on the show together. Oh, I, here you go. I feel like we could really get into some stuff with the two of you out here. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Well, first of all, <laughs> Phineas, you don't have a last name. Billy has a last name. What happened? <laughs> parents run out of money? What happened there? Well, my name is three syllables, and then the, our, like, legal last name is another three syllables. Uh -huh. It just felt really clunky. Um, oh. And I'm a big fan of Cher, so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a big swing to go for the one name deal. And then were you upset by this? That you... Well, I've, I've been like, so mine's Billy Eilish O'Connell. Billy Eilish O'Connell? His is Phineas O'Connell. Yeah. But I've just been going by Billy Eilish since I was like a little baby, so. Okay. I don't so know. you made that decision very early. Uh huh. And, and what about your dad? Is he upset that you've rejected him outright? <laughs> It's just like not the sickest like last name. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just like It's a solid last name, O'Connell. No? If we had like a potato farm. It's so Irish. Irish. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like very, very Irish. <laughs> Billy Eilish. Oh, I mean it just doesn't get any more Irish than that. Yeah, it's pretty Irish. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. You can get a potato farm too. You guys could easily buy a potato farm if you wanted to at this point. Your parents do go on tour with you, right? Yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah. Oh, both of them. Yeah. What do they do when they're on tour with you. Well, so I just have our parents come out just to be like our, my parents. Like, I like to bring them out because I like them and I want their company and whatever. And our dad likes to be, what, well, how would you start this uh, he, topic? He wants to be useful so bad, which I respect <laughs> and love. Um, and, uh, and he does like set carpentry on our tour, like as the tour has gotten bigger. Like it start, when we started, he was like helping drive the van and carrying amps into the venues and stuff. And now he's one of the, the set carpenters, meaning yeah. he like builds the stage he every day. He works as but... one of the carps on the, on the crew. You're like, so Dad, have, like... we need a bench. Yeah, no, literally he builds like little staircases and stuff and he like sweeps the floor. He I'm does. so serious. Yeah, and they like, they stay, the crew stays in like different hotels, they have different buses, they have different calls. You know, he, he gets there. He's with them. He's with the crew. Yeah, dude. He gets there at like 3 a.m. They load in all night long until like 11 a.m. Then they have like a couple hours off. He goes back at 6 p.m., does the changeover. Then, like, it's crazy. And he won't tell anybody on the crew his full name because he doesn't want anyone to know that he's they related to me. They must know this. How would they not know? They think, I think they do know, but course, he, like, yeah. doesn't want absolutely any nepotism. <laughs> doesn't want any special treatment Perverse at all. Reverse nepotism. That's kind of yeah. great, I guess. And then, but then does your mom have to stay in the crew hotel and no. get up? No, my mom's o'clock? with me. And mom stays with you. Yeah. Do you guys always get along? Because you do seem to really like each other. I mean, maybe I'm, I don't know, maybe I don't know you that well, but we it do. does seem like you really like each other and you work together, which is, I think, it's hard to keep people together. You work together so much. Are there things about each other that drive you crazy? <laughs> what do you think? I would imagine there must be, yeah. There's a good chunk, but... <laughs> well, it's like, I don't know, we were just talking Whoever about... Whoever goes first sets the tone for the response. <laughs> I was just gonna say that what's cool about it is that you know, when we get into something, we can have, we can like blow up at each other. We can have like arguments or whatever. We honestly don't as much as we did when we were children. Children, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but when we do, it's like, because we're siblings, like if you were to have the kind of argument that we can have, if like with a friend or like a partner, it's so damaging and it can really like change your dynamic. But with siblings, it's like, you know you love each other and you know that nothing's gonna like, you can't break up, like you can't, really separate, or at least we don't want to. I don't know, so. Yeah. Don't you have like every cousin and son and like partner also in the building right now? Yeah, working here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But it's a little different because there's a hierarchy, and there's I'm a, there's way a, at the top. Yeah. Way, there's way, a, way at the top. There's, <laughs> there's, there's a total hierarchy here. Oh, there is. Okay. Yeah. Say my name and see the crowd response. Say her name. See the crowd response. Because <laughs> you only have one name. She's got two. You screwed up. <laughs> Um, okay, but if there's a disagreement, let's say musically, if there's a disagreement, how do you, like, how do you resolve it? Uh, w if we both disagree passionately, like, we make our arguments, and then usually one person dies on the hill. One person can't let go of it, and the other one lets go of it. <laughs> and that's really how we do it. And, and usually, like, one, the other one sees the light. The other one's like, oh, you were right about that idea. Like, we've, I feel like we've both done that a lot. Yeah, we have. Can um, you think of an example where you thought something was not great and turned out it was? Well, we both had, on What Was I Made For, there was like a, a terrible verse that went away. <laughs> and Billy was the first one to be like, we have to kill this. This, this verse is it was awful. so bad. And it was then, bad. And I was like, you think so? And then upon revisiting it later, I was like, oh my god. Are you hard so on bad. yourselves when it comes to like the lyrics and certain songs, if you look back on an old song? Yes, yeah. for sure. We're, yes. Is yeah. there a song in particular that you look back on that you, uh, that makes you uncomfortable? Cringe a little. Yeah. Um, well, objectively, Bad Guy is like the stupidest song in the world. But Someone it's really gasped. good. It's good. Oh my God, don't gasp. But it's just like, you have to understand. You have to have like humor in it. Like that song, I'm trolling. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that song is like supposed to be goofy, but like, it's just funny because I'm like, it's dumb. <laughs> it's literally like, duh. Like what? <laughs> like, what does that mean? Actually? I don't know, but it works. This is one of the things. It works. I think you can overthink things sometimes. Yeah. And you can outsmart yourself because yeah. I'll tell you something. That song comes on in our house, and our kids are just waiting for the duh to come up. <laughs> they love the duh. Well, the it duh definitely is works. And I would say that, you know, we talk about this a lot, but like Phineas and I, we, we kind of, I think, simultaneously both really disagree with when an artist is like very, I don't know, hateful towards their own music. And right. like, I don't like my music. I don't ever listen to my music. I find that very, I just find it really frustrating because I'm like, what are you, why are you doing this then? And I, and Finney is, I think, I want to speak for you, but I feel like we both are, like, big fans of what we make. And, like, I love my own music. And it definitely just, like, changes and morphs. And with me, it becomes whatever. But it's, I still cringe. I just, I appreciate it, though. Right. Well, as you grow, you look yeah. back at the things you did and you get better at things. And you go, like, oh, I wish nobody could see that. Yeah. <laughs> but it means something different to them. Well, when we come back, we're going to see... Um, you're just talking about your big hit single, and we have a, I think, a very interesting look into your process. Uh, when we come back, Phineas and Billie Eilish are here with us. We'll be right back. Back when Billie Eilish and Phineas, the new, they're calling them the new Donnie and Marie. Um, you guys, uh, I, well, you know, we're not talking about projects that are struck. You know, we have a strike going on here, right. but you made a big hit song called What Was I Made For that has been streamed now. 600 million times. Do you guys ever like think about the numbers and how mind boggling that is? It's pretty nuts. It's a lot of, that's a lot of listens. 600 million times you guys recorded this song and then it goes out to the world and there are people who just listen to it over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's how it works, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's really... I just explained the process of recording <laughs> music, but it's still kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. How do you go about writing a song that someone asked you to write? Good question. Honestly, yeah, it is a good question. I, I would actually say that it's, it's like, to be frank, it's like where I, and I think Phineas and I together, kind of, like, thrive. I think that when we are given a prompt, that is when we make... Like, my kind of favorite thing. I feel like it's, it's pretty hard, honestly, for me to write my exact feeling. I feel like that's kind of goes for your life in general, is like, it's hard to know how you feel in the moment. It's much easier to like, look back and be like, damn, that's how I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I do that a lot. And with music, I find it really hard to sit and write how I'm feeling, just from my own perspective and my own experience and my own. I just like, I kind of have this feeling of like, eh, boring, nobody cares. Like, I want to. Everyone's heard that before, and I feel mm -hmm. like when I'm given a prompt and given a story to write about, like an assignment, kind of. Yeah. yeah, it's like homework in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what was crazy about this song was that it it was an assignment, and then it turned out to be exactly 
how I felt. So then Interesting. it was kind of trippy, yeah. Do you guys videotape your recording sessions always? We have in the past, um, like the past Year. 12 months. Yeah, we've, like, we've had a camcorder. We, we made a documentary a couple of years ago and the, we had a crew on that. We had right. a boom operator and right. a camera operator always in the room. And it's pretty hard to forget that two people are there when they're like <laughs> that close to you. Yeah. And so we thought it would be an interesting experiment to like bring our own cameras in. And so we like if Billy's singing or playing piano or guitar, I'll just film her and vice versa. And it's been so uh, dangerous because you forget that it's all recorded. It's yeah. really we've we've blackmailed ourselves we're just, we're just, for we're years. Just, we're just <laughs> crazy. We're just talking talking ish. Yeah. So you guys are um, are like kind of working through this song, yeah. and I guess this is how you write songs. You just try things and you sit there. And you're shooting this, Phineas. This uh, we probably video? Have it on a we shelf. Have it, like, sitting in the corner. Okay, yeah. this is like a almost like a ring cam type of situation. Yeah. We've, yeah. Been, we've but, been like filming the whole creation of the next album we're working on. So this is how this is a um, song that's been listened to more than 600 million times <laughs> is made. That's when you realize, that's when you wrote the made for part? Because the made for, would, it seems like it would be the first thing you came up with when you're singing about a doll. Mm -hmm. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> and when, you, and did you guys both have a moment of excitement where you knew that was, oh, that's it? Honestly, no. It was funny. It was Just this, me? It was, this yeah. <laughs> it was this random day in January, and we had had, like, honestly, we'd, I'd been there for, like, six hours. We hadn't come up with anything. We were just very uninspired and like not just being so unproductive. And I was like, honestly, probably had my keys in my hand, was walking out the door like, okay, this is this day is trash. And Phineas was like, should we just, should we just try to write this one? And I sat back down and he started playing those chords immediately. And then I wrote, together we wrote, I used to float, now I just fall down. I used to know, but I'm not sure now what I was made for. And as soon as we wrote that, and then we finished it with the, what was I made for? And I think that that, that like full sentence was just like, oh, okay, we're doing this. Unbelievable. That's, I mean, that's pretty cool. We wrote, Persistence. Um, yeah. We wrote the whole song, pretty much the whole song, except for like the last verse in like an hour or two that night. And wow. It was, crazy. Yeah, it was really cool. Six hours of struggling, and then it just comes bursting. Yeah. It's almost like having a baby. You yeah. know. <laughs> you would totally know. It's great to have you guys here. Thank you for coming. <laughs> uh, for the song is called What Was I Made For? It is out now. Billie Eilish and Phineas, everybody. We'll be back with you.